Thank you for joining us at Friendship Christian Church. A sermon today comes out of Psalm 144. It's entitled The Soldier's Psalm. Uh, we are here today just before Veterans Day where we celebrate the service of men and women of this nation, the service that they've given to this nation. And this psalm written by David was a psalm that was used for service members throughout the world as a source of encouragement. He wrote it to encourage his men, and it was God's words given to David that encouraged David. So as Christians, even though this is meant for warriors, as Christians, this speaks to us as well, because we are warriors. We're warriors in this world warriors against the satanic powers, principalities that are operating in this world. So it resonates, not just with veterans, but also with all Christians. But today we do want to send out our heartfelt thank you for your service to all those men and women who have served this nation. Let us uh, now go to verse 1. Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God, my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. Uh, what we're talking about here are the basis of life. This first paragraph of the psalm really talks about the basis of life. Jesus had ended his Sermon on the Mount by describing two men. Both saved their money, they both bought property, they both hired carpenters, and they both built their dream homes. One built on bedrock, the other built on sand. And of course, the house built on sand did not have a firm foundation and it fell. The one on the bedrock with a firm foundation stood as the storms raged. So when we hear of these things, these sayings, uh, Jesus says, uh, obey them, build on a solid foundation. And so what we have here is the basis of life. These, these verses here are that foundation. The foundation, praise be the Lord, my rock, the firm foundation. It's God who trains us up by the Holy Spirit. And he says here for war, uh, we are at war with powers and principalities in this world. And uh, God is our deliverer. He's our stronghold. Where else can we go when we come under spiritual attack? None of the things of the world will help us, give us strength to endure, to persevere. Only God, the Holy Spirit, can help us stand up, stay strong, and face the storms of this world. So we take refuge. We take refuge in the strength and the knowledge of God. We take refuge in the peace and the comfort of Jesus Christ. We take refuge in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. So we need to build our spiritual foundation on the rock. Lord, my rock, we must build it on Jesus Christ. Uh, actor Matthew Perry once said, I have all this money and fancy cars and beautiful girls, but it doesn't make me happy. Christ alone is the basis of life and happiness. He is the rock of the ages. He is the sure foundation. He calls us to be his disciples, to build our lives on the foundation 
of himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we're to build our lives. Uh, in a Gideon publication, a soldier named Joe Padona tells of being shot down over Vietnam in 1972. Expecting capture by the enemy, he put a gun to his head. Just then, he heard sounds of approaching helicopters. An American chopper lowered a ladder. Joe said, when I was pulled in, I threw my arms around the nearest soldier and said, man, you just saved my life. The soldier looked at him with compassion and said, I didn't save you today. Jesus did. Now you should live your life for him. And then uh, Joe says, he handed me a New Testament. Uh, as he read it, Joe Padona accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And that's a decision everyone needs to make. No matter how you, you lived your life, how long you've lived your life, have you lived it on the foundation of Jesus Christ? Is he your Lord and Savior? Have you lived it serving him? You see, we have veterans all across uh, the United States who have served uh, the, this nation under terrible circumstances. Uh, they were in some of the worst battles and some of the worst wars. Uh, they carry around external and internal scars, but they serve this nation honorably. And have, have you served Jesus in that way? Have you served him through all the difficult adversities of life, or have you caved, or have you not even sought him at all? Have you been going through everything uh, alone? without Jesus Christ? Well, the answer to that question, regardless of how you did, regardless of how long it was, it's never too late. It's never too late to turn your life over to Christ. We don't know how old Joe Padona was. Uh, he was probably 30 or less. But uh, he, he had spent a considerable amount of time, uh, at least a, a quarter of his life, without Jesus Christ. Well, in 1972, that changed. He came to Christ, and he lived for Christ the remainder of his days. So, how much water has gone under the bridge in your life? How long have you not been serving him through all the adversities, through the power and principalities trying to tear you and this world down? Have you been a worthy servant? Have you done honorable service for Christ? Well, if the answer is no, that is okay. Because like Job, you can read the Bible, you can accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you can take what's remaining of your life and finish well. You can strive to finish well. You can look back and go, well, I've got more life behind me than I have before me. That's okay. You can finish well. Maybe you're young enough. You can look back and go, well, I've got a lot more life ahead of me than I've got behind me. That's great. That means you've got a lot of service you can put in. Honorable service for Jesus Christ. So the challenge becomes, will you do it? Will you serve Jesus Christ? Will you serve him honorably? Will you serve him with your heart, your mind, your soul? Will you serve him with a lot of time left? Or will you serve him at least finishing well. Uh, I have a, another uh, a verse here, verses 3 and 4, that talks about the brevity of life. Uh, verse uh, 3, O Lord, what is man that you care for him, 
the son of man that you think of him. Man is like a breath. His days are like a fleeting shadow. Here the psalmist uses two pictures of the brevity of life. A sigh and a shadow. A sigh. Man, what, why, do you, why do you think of him? Man is like a breath. A sigh. A breath. And a fleeting shadow. Fleeting shadow. See, no army can withstand an enemy of time and death. Attrition will lower your numbers and make you weak. Uh, you only have enough supplies for a certain amount of time. You can only endure a certain number of deaths before you have no fighting power left. So Jesus says, I am the res resurrection and the life in John eleven twenty five, 25. He does not run out of life. Death cannot weaken him. And he's eternal. He, ha he has power over time. So humanity, uh, we, we live in time. We live in death. And Jesus is way above that. He's not going to run out of time. He's not going to run out of materiel. He's not going to die. He's not going to run out of uh, power to fight. Jesus is eternal, all-powerful, above death, above time. So who should we give our service to? To ourselves or to Christ? Uh, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You definitely don't want to give it all to yourself. You're going to run out of time. You're going to face death. You're going to you're going to lose power. We need to put our service in Jesus Christ. So. Uh, we have the battles of life. I call it the adversities of life. And uh, a good friend of mine uh, actually wrote a song uh, entitled The Adversities of Life. And uh, he's a Nashville uh, musician. And uh, the song got recorded. And uh, his name is Jude. If you ever uh, look him up as a Nashville artist, uh, his father... Every time Jude complained, his father used to tell him, son, that's just the adversities of life. And that inspired his music and his song. So I, I, I always think of the battles of life as the adversities of life. But this is, this is what uh, verses 5 through 8 talk about, the battles of life. Uh, Part your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemies. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. The battles of life. He's, he's kind of listing everything that we face. In life, this is what life gives us because it's driven by the desires of evil powers and principalities. You see, the battles of life is strife and it's also temptation. And so, this world gives us both to try to weaken us, uh, to, to stop honorably serving. Uh, Jesus Christ. Life is a series of struggles, trials, and tribulations. And it seems like they never end. Uh, est a liquid semper. It's a Latin phrase that I've kind of adopted, and it means it's always something. There is always something. Just when you think, oh, I can put this to rest, I've gotten everything taken care of, the phone rings. Somebody comes to the door. The car breaks down. Something always happens. So we're fighting battles today. 
battles of the world, battles of powers and principalities, uh, ba uh, battles of nature. It's always something. And how do we do these battles? Do we rely on our own power, our own knowledge, our own wisdom? Or do we reach out to Jesus Christ, the solid rock, to give us that peace, contentment, and strength and perseverance to make it through those battles? It's tough. Life is hard. Life is hard. But now the psalm switches from the battles of life to the blessings of life because we receive blessings in this world as well particularly if you are serving Jesus Christ. Uh, take a look at verse 9. I will sing a new song to you, O God, on the ten-string lyre. I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David from the deadly sword. Deliver me and rescue me from the hands of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons and their youth will be well nurtured. Plants and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There'll be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed are the people of whom this is true. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. So do you see a difference here in tone between the battles of life and the blessings of life. We all are going to do battles. We all have our trials, tribulations. Uh, as the liquid sector, it's, it's always something. But with Jesus Christ, you can persevere. You can persevere. And blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. Because not only do we have the trials and tribulations, but we have the peace and comfort. And that's a blessing. And God blesses us in abundance of that. We get blessings all the time. Small, big, we're blessed people. And uh, so it ends now with a description of God's blessing on us over our enemies. We will prevail. We're going to go through the trial and tribulation. We're going to go through the battle, but we will prevail. We will make it through to the other end. Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. And it changes lives. When you, when you tune into this and you go, okay, I'm, I'm going to have the trials, tribulations, no matter what. But I need to be able to persevere. I, I can't allow the world to crush me. But I have no power. I have no resources. I'm going to run out of time. I'm going to die. That's when you have Jesus Christ. And for some people, that, that need for Christ may be more uh, immediate than for others. Uh, they're probably on the deathbed, whereas some of us still have little life left. But don't wait till you're on the deathbed. Don't wait till the last minute. Do it now. Finish well. Get God into your life. Give your life to Jesus Christ. And I have another little story to share here from World War II that speaks about that. Uh, during World War II, a Marine named James Colson was scheduled to sail from San Diego aboard the USS President Adams. Someone handed him a New Testament, which he stuffed in his gear. One day in the South Pacific, he opened his bat combat gear for rations and saw the little Bible. He began reading it and soon read these words. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Shortly thereafter, 
at Guadalcanal, the Japanese began a three-day siege around the clock, shelling, and James had dug a foxhole under a tall tree. Suddenly, he detected a missile coming straight toward them. James and his buddy leaped into their foxhole, but the shell landed just in front of them. They knew when the shell exploded, it would kill them both. James looked over his friend and shouted, Kenny, I want you to know that I'm confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. His buddy looked back at him and said, So am I. The shell never exploded. But that was the turning point in James Colston's life. Not only did he serve his nation honorably, not only did he serve his core honorably, he from that moment on served his Lord honorably. It took a very strong test to bring James Colson to Christ. Don't let it be a strong test for you. Give your life to Christ, however much life you have. We may all only have five minutes. Some of us may have five years. Some of us may have 50. Serve Jesus Christ with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Let Jesus be your Lord. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. He will help you get through the battles of life. And he will give you abundant blessings along the way. Confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when you do this, you become heir, an equal heir with Jesus Christ to all of God's blessings. Happy, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. So if you need to come to Christ for the first time, if you need to recommit your life and salvage what's left, Call me, 502-220-1285, and we will talk about it. Uh, thank you so much, and have a blessed week.